What kind of Molly polynomial function? We're given the zeros? Oh, the zeros? Okay, I'll stop. All right. So we have uh, three zeros for this one. And we have these weird things. Look at those weird things. Those zeros are not x-intercepts, just so you know. I know, normally zeros are x-intercepts, but because they're imaginary, they're not gonna be x-intercepts. And they also, they come in pairs. See, look, these ones come in pairs. This one, hey, where's your pair? You can't fool me, problem. His pair is three minus square root of two i. So see, he has a pair right there. So if you did that one and didn't do the extra dude, you didn't get it right. And look at this guy down here. He's missing a pair also. Really? Yes, uh, his pair is, uh, what's his pair? One minus square root of three i. Uh, I don't like putting the i after the square root because then it looks like the square root's inside of it. That's why I do this little hanging thing right there. All right, so how do we do this? Now we gotta set it up. So uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra says, you know, everything, every polynomial can be split up into like x minus k's, right? The k's are your zeros. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go x minus six. That's my first zero. My next zero is going to be x minus negative five plus two i. Don't forget to put parentheses around that one and then parentheses around the whole thing. Okay, and then we have the last one, x minus, ugh, negative five minus two i. And I'm not gonna distribute anything right now or try to do the, like this, this negative or this negative. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna leave them and I'm gonna start my multiplication. I'm not gonna multiply this guy yet because he's too easy. This guy and this guy, no. Okay, no. I know that's what you guys are thinking right now. You see them and you're like, no. Okay, what is x times x? That is x squared. Okay, and then we have x times that dude. That is a negative, oops, forgot my x. x, negative five minus two i. Okay, and then we have our next one. We have a negative this thing uh, times i. So that's a negative x uh, times that thing, uh, negative five minus or plus two i. And then we have the last one, a negative times a negative. See, negative times a negative. So that's gonna be a positive. So we're gonna go positive. I'm not gonna multiply it out yet. I'm just gonna write it. Yeah, negative five plus two i, and then multiply that times negative five minus two i. I'm finished like simplifying all this nonsense right here. Uh, I'm then gonna have to multiply this by negative, or x minus six. Okay, let's simplify nonsense. All right, so we have x squared minus, oh, no, no, no. What is negative x times negative five? That's a positive five x. Negative x times negative two i is positive two x i. I always goes last because we don't like him. And then we have negative x times negative five. Ooh, another one. Another negative x times negative two, or positive two i, which would then be a negative two x i. Ooh, uh, and then we finally get to this guy. Ooh, uh, now you guys remember um, difference of squares, right? Like we had x plus five times x minus five. If you multiply this, uh, the middle terms cancel out, so you end up just getting x squared minus twenty five, right? Right. Uh, well, these are like conjugates almost. Um, so. That is the same thing that's gonna happen right here, so I'm not gonna multiply it all out, I'm just gonna kinda use my shortcut thing. So I'm gonna go negative five squared, which would be 25, and then I'm gonna go two i squared, right? It'd be minus, and then two i squared, two i squared. I gotta square that one also. What is that, what is two i squared? So two i times two i, that would be four i squared. And what is i squared equal? Negative one. That's a negative one, so what is four times negative one? So this is a negative four, which becomes positive four because of this minus, right? Right, so I have a positive four. So now, more simplification. <gasps> I'm so tired of this part of the problem. Okay, x squared, no friends. Five x, he has a friend, so we're gonna add them together, 10 x. And then this guy right here, he was hideous. Um, oh, he's hideous too. Hey, let's let them cancel each other out because one's positive two, one's negative two. And then we have our 25 and the four, so we get a 29. Oh wow, that's not that bad. He doesn't look as ugly as he once did. It's almost like you when you put on makeup or something. On there. <laughs> okay, uh, so x times x squared is gonna be x to the third power, x times 10 is going to be 10x squared, and then x times 29, that's going to be 29x. And then negative six times x squared, oh my gosh, it's like never ends. Negative six times the next dude is gonna be negative 60x. And then we have negative six times 29. Ah, 29, are you kidding me? Oh, what is that, 174? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's double check. We are right. 
All right, so um, now I have to add all these dudes together. So I have x to the third um, plus 4x squared uh, minus 31x and then minus 174. There you have it. There's our polynomial function. Oh. Okay, so he's, he's nice and everything. He has these zeros. He does. He has those zeros. Uh, man, I would hate to factor this because of that big dumb number right there, 174. Uh, now, you remember, you see how it says there are many correct answers? What the heck does that mean? I only see one way to get this. That's what you were thinking, huh? No. And the reason why it says that is because <laughs> I was not thinking that. <laughs> you finished the problem, done, next one. Uh, because we could put an A right here. An A is a constant. We can call him a constant. This A would multiply to everything when we're done. Let's pretend that A was negative 5. So if I pretended that the a was negative 5, I would get negative 5x to the third minus 20x squared plus some big number like 155x, uh, and then I'd have to multiply it times the 174. But unfortunately, guys, I'm sorry. I have no more space, so I don't have to. Uh, so this guy right here, if I were to finish it, this would have the same zeros, even though I multiplied everything by negative 5. It will change the way it looks a little bit. You see how the leading coefficient became negative? That would flip the, the end behaviors. But look, the degree's the same. If we were to factor this, we'll get right back to uh, the very beginning and we would get the same zeros. Interesting, nah? 